Welcome to Rock City Cookies, where we talk about all things cookies. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. Thanks for watching. Hello, sweet friends. Welcome back to a new tutorial video today. The holiday season is upon us and I have a lot of Christmas content for you guys. So we are gonna kick it off early in November with a Home Alone set. Now Home Alone is a family favorite around here and a tradition for us to watch. So when I got asked to make this set, I was extremely excited. And you'll notice that I had a hard time narrowing down my ideas. So there are a lot of designs in this set. So ready or not, here we go. Our first design is the iconic battle plan from Kevin's scene to set up all the booby traps in his house. Now I'm going to confess to you right away that I made this set last year whenever I had not even considered setting up a YouTube account and therefore I had recorded all of these cookies with the time lapse feature on my phone. Which means in order for me to slow it down so that you can see anything at all that I'm doing in these videos, the video quality is awful and I am so so sorry about that. But it was a cute enough set that I was hoping that y'all would forgive me for that and still enjoy watching this tutorial. So with this battle plan cookie, I did choose a rectangle for my shape and then I outlined it with a thicker consistency and then I flooded it right away with a thinner flood consistency. Now because I'm using marker all over the top of this cookie, I knew it needed to be really dry before I could work on it, otherwise the marker could accidentally punch through your icing. So definitely dry that icing under a fan or any dehydrator for quite a while before you start the work on top. Now this battle plan clip art I'm using here, I found the image on Google and I just projected it with my pocket Pico projector. Now the markers that I'm using here, the colored markers all came in one pack, which I will link in my description box below and they are edible markers. But the black marker is a different brand and a different set. It too will be linked down below, but it's really important that you get a fine tip black edible marker whenever you're doing little words like that. All right, my last little tidbit about this cookie is make sure you get cornstarch and with a dry brush, brush the whole surface of your cookie. I even let the cornstarch sit for just a minute before I brush it completely off of the cookie and this just absorbs any of the extra moisture from your marker so that when you go to bag it, that the bag doesn't smear your marker work. It's not a foolproof plan, but it does help significantly. Okay, I am done tracing the image onto my cookie, so our battle plan cookie is done. Okay, our next design is going to say Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. For this cookie, I pulled out one of my favorite plaques, which is the Nancy plaque by Kaleidocuts. When buying cookie cutters, I always recommend that you get some versatile shapes that you can use for any set. So I have used this in so many ways I couldn't even count, but I love this particular plaque and I think you will too. I'll link it down below. Now the image that I'm using here that I'm projecting onto my cookie, I actually made that image. I couldn't find exactly what I wanted to fit that elongated shape like that. So I just made it in the Fonto app. Now, if you are interested in that specific graphic, you can always go to my social media. I always post my sets on Facebook and Instagram, and you can screenshot that cookie and then just use that image to project onto your own cookie. Now, I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. Anything that I put out here on YouTube as a tutorial, you have my permission to duplicate those designs on your own sets. Just be sure to tag me so that I can see and share your awesome work. All right, that's it for our Buzz Your Girlfriend Woof design. Let's move on to the Home Alone logo. Now, this design is on a skinny rectangle. If you do not have a skinny rectangle, you can always take your regular rectangle cookie cutter, cut the dough out, and then with a sharp knife, cut straight down the middle, and then you'll have two skinny rectangles that you can use for this design. Now, the colors in this set were red and green, yellow, blue, white, and black. So in planning my cookies, I make sure that I try to spread out the colors as evenly as I can, which means before I flood any cookies, I kind of look through my designs and figure out how many of each color 
background I'm going to do. That way I don't have all white backgrounds or all green backgrounds or all red backgrounds. I try to spread it out throughout the set so that all my colors tie together and in the end it's a very visually pleasing set. So if you don't have paper and pencil where you plan all that out, one way that you can do that is before you flood any of your cookies, stack your cookies in groups that are going to be the various colors. So I made little piles of all the cookies that were going to have a green background or all the cookies that were going to have a red background or all the cookies that were going to have white or yellow backgrounds. And this allowed me to visually see that I wasn't using one color too much, especially in a set like this that is all about quotes, funny sayings, or memorable moments in the movie. All right, our Home Alone logo is done. Our next design is a nod to the Home Alone house that's on the logo. Now, I did not want to make a special cookie cutter for this, so I had a house cookie cutter and I just went with it. I thought if I did a yellow window with a red house that everyone would get that it was the Home Alone house. Now, I wanted to make sure the little square for the yellow window stayed put, so I actually flooded that first I let it dry for a little bit and then I went back with my red icing and flooded around it. A wet on wet technique would work in that situation. It would still have the yellow window with the red house. However, if you really want it to keep that crisp edge where you can really definitely tell that it's a square and not a blob, I highly recommend that you outline and flood the yellow window first, then go back with your red icing after the yellow icing has had at least enough time to crisp over. Now, of course, I couldn't just leave it just the Home Alone house, so I did put one of my very favorite quotes from Home Alone on this, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Now, the icing I am using here is a thick consistency icing. So with your lettering, you really want to make sure you have a thick icing, especially when doing small lettering like this. And either use a really fine tip like the PME tips that you can get on Amazon, or if you have tipless bags like I do, cut a small hole first to do your lettering. And if you need to make it a little bit bigger, just cut the tiniest, tiniest bit off of your bag and just do a little bit at a time until you have the right opening to get really great lettering. And like I said, if you have tips that you prefer instead of using tipless bags, that's perfectly fine. I use them for a long time, but I highly recommend PME tips for any small details or writing on cookies. And no worries, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll be sure to link the ones that I love down in the description box below. I did find this graphic on Google. Just Google Merry Christmas, you filthy animal and do some searching and you'll see it listed there under the images tab. And that's it, this design is done. This next design is the Kevin cookie. So one of the most iconic moments is when, and we can all hear it in our brains, but it is when Kevin is yelled in the movie. I kept this really simple and I went with a cookie cutter that I'd already used once in this set, which I love to do. I love to reuse shapes more than once if I can in a set in addition to rotating out colors. And I just created a graphic that said Kevin on it in the Fonto app and then I piped it with that thick white icing on top. Definitely one of the easiest designs in the set, but I love it all the same. Speaking of Kevin, our next design is going to be Kevin's face when he puts that aftershave cream on after his shower. Tying in the yellow from the Home Alone logo and from the yellow in the house cookie, I wanted to make sure that this cookie had a yellow background, but also because I was going to be doing Kevin's face with a fine tip black edible marker on top of the flood icing. So I needed a lighter color so that you for sure could see his face better than you could if it was going to be the red or green background. Now anytime I am doing a image like this on top of a cookie, I try to find a black and white outline of that image. It makes tracing it so much easier. So for this image, I most likely googled Kevin Home Alone Black and White. Just a little tidbit in case you have no idea what to search for when trying to find images like this online. Now I'm using the same exact fine tip marker that I used before. It will be linked down below. And then for his mouth, instead of using the fine tip, I just used a regular black edible marker there just to color it in quicker. And that's it. Our Kevin face is done. 
Now this next cookie is the logo from the van that Harry and Marv drive in the first movie. It is called OK Plumbing and Heating. As a kid, I didn't quite understand the humor behind this logo, but as an adult, I can fully appreciate the humor behind them driving around in a van that says your flood control experts when they themselves flooded houses as the wet bandits. Again, since I was going to be riding on this cookie, I wanted to make sure the background was light. I just did a yellow cookie, so now I'm going to do a white cookie. And once again, Google came in for the logo for me. I was able to just project that onto my cookie and copy it from there. And our OK Plumbing and Heating cookie logo is done. This next design is probably my favorite design in the entire set. I did a lot of research before I made this set, gathering all of the graphics that I would need, and I ran across this one. I actually purchased the print from Brixton Creative on Etsy, and I'll be sure to link the shop down below because it is the cutest print and it makes the perfect addition to Christmas decorations. And it's also a really good gift idea for a home alone lover in your life. But this is the quote, Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. And I love it so much. We all know why Fuller has to go easy on that Pepsi. Poor Kevin. But I love how it incorporates the Pepsi colors as well as the font in the Pepsi curve as the regular Pepsi logo goes. So such a cute and creative graphic. So I highly recommend you check out Brixton Creative. After letting the white base flood of this cookie dry, I decided to pipe on the lettering that is in the center of the cookie first. I knew the lettering was the most important part of this cookie, so I wanted to do that first to make sure I didn't mess that up before I flooded the outside parts, which is the red section at the top and the blue section at the bottom. Now, when you're doing big sections of icing like this on top of a base flood of icing, you have to be careful not to overfill those sections or else they can spill over the edge. And you definitely want to make sure all air bubbles are popped. So use that scribe and pop out your air bubbles so that you have a nice smooth flood on top of your cookie. Okay, our fuller go easy on the Pepsi cookies done. Moving on to our next design, it will be the Little Nero's logo. Not only do we see Little Nero's pizza in the opening sequence of the movie, but we also see it later in the movie as well. So I knew I wanted to make sure and reference it in this set. I relied heavily on using a rectangle cookie cutter with this set. It just happened to be the perfect backdrop for a lot of the designs that I did this set. Like before, I outlined with a thick consistency icing and flooded with a thinner consistency icing right away. Once again, this cookie will be entirely marker work, so make sure that your base flood is extra dry before you attempt to write on this cookie. Now I tried on a separate cookie to flood some elements of this logo, but truthfully, I just didn't like how it looked because on the pizza box, it's a flat logo. There's not raised. So in my opinion, to keep it more true to the logo in the movie, I decided to do it straight marker work so that nothing was raised. So it looked actually like the logo on the pizza box. And like before, I was able to find this graphic on Google, but as you can see, it didn't perfectly fit my rectangle. So I wasn't afraid to zoom in and out and put things strategically on the shape so that it fit perfectly and it looked good. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there was many times where I tried to zoom in and out on the actual cookie instead of on my iPad that was projecting the image onto the cookie. So please tell me I'm not alone and you too have tried to zoom in and out on your cookies when you've been projecting images before. Okay, as we finish up this cookie, I did go through and do all the colors first so they could dry for just a second before I went back over them with a black fine marker just to kind of add more details to them, outline it, make it look more like the actual logo. And don't forget to use cornstarch on this cookie after it has dried for a little while to try to prevent any smearing from happening when you go to heat seal this cookie. All right, let's move on from Little Nero's to toothbrushes. As I mentioned before, watching Home Alone every year is a family tradition for us, and so we make a whole night of it. We have a Home Alone book that we read, we eat macaroni and cheese and pizza for dinner, the kids have TikToks as dessert, and they all get new toothbrushes. So I knew for sure that I was going to have a cookie in this set that said, has this toothbrush been approved by the American Dental Association? So this one's it. Using an Ann Clark 
plaque, I outlined and flooded this cookie with our green color. After I dried it under a fan for a little while, I came back and did piping work on top with all of our wording. I did find this image on Google, but I have to warn you, whenever you do cookies that have this much wording on them, be prepared for your hand to kill you. Because it's a thicker icing, because your hole in your piping bag is smaller, you have to put more pressure on your bag for the icing to come out, which means your hands are killing you by the time that you get done but it was worth it. And thankfully, one of the perks of having so many designs in this set means I didn't have to do very many duplicates. So I only had to do this cookie twice, thank goodness. But the trick to doing such thin icing whenever you have to squeeze really hard is really doing your best to apply equal pressure to your bag the entire time that you're piping. All right, our toothbrush cookie is done. We only have two designs left. Next up is the VHS tape with the label Angels with Filthy Souls. A little fun fact, Angels with Filthy Souls is not a real movie. They actually made it up just for Home Alone. They wanted a gangster movie, and so they recorded all of the scenes all in one day, and that's what we see on Home Alone. Now, I could not find a graphic that I liked to use for this cookie, so I made up one by looking up just a VHS clip art image with some text that I made in the Fonto app for the label. Now, to add dimension to a cookie, you do have to work section by section and allow your icing to dry a little bit before you move on to the next part. So the first thing I did was I did the white parts of the cookie and then I moved on to doing the different black sections. But as you can see, it really does make a difference to separate your icing so that you can really see all the details by doing each section one at a time and really making sure it's dry before you move to the next. Now, full disclosure, I do not like how thin my icing is here. It's a lot thinner than I normally work with. So it is a little bit of a risk to work with this thin of icing. I could have had my icing flood over the side, like spill over the sides of my cookie. I could have had some cratering going on. It definitely is a flatter cookie. It doesn't have my usual puff. So just letting you know, we all do this. We all use icing sometimes that's not the best or perfect consistency you make it work, but I definitely was risking a little bit by using such a thin icing. All right, the last thing that we have to do is just write our label, which is Angels with Filthy Souls. And then I did go ahead with my black edible marker and add a little bit of marker work on the white sections to show the VHS tape on the rolls. And with that, we are done with our VHS tape. Moving on to our final design, which is just a small plaque that will say wet bandits. Now I chose to do this cookie in blue because in the Pepsi cookie we have blue, but that's pretty much it in the set where we have blue. So I wanted to make sure to include blue elsewhere in the set so that it makes sense as a color. But I also thought it worked because this is the wet bandits cookie, which is referencing water and blue water. So I thought it worked here with this cookie as well. Now I liked the placement of the letters of this graphic, but I didn't like the font of it. So I changed it as I was doing the lettering to match more of the other fonts that I used in the set. So don't be afraid to change graphics that you find to make them work better for what you need them to be. All right, that is the end of our Home Alone set. Thank you so much for watching today. Did I cover all of your favorite things about Home Alone? Did you get all of the references? What did you think about this set? And are you planning on watching Home Alone this holiday season with your family? Happy holidays, sweet friends. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.